y'all. Welcome back to the farm. Today, we're going to be taking care of an oxygen sensor on this 4Runner that's been out the entire time that I've owned it. I've owned this 4Runner for a couple years now, and one thing that has always been on the dash has been a check engine light for the left lower oxygen sensor. So today, we got the replacement. Oxygen sensor is actually really easy to replace out if you have the right tool and if they're not welded solid to the exhaust. So let's get under this thing, figure out what we're up against, and get this thing swapped out because it's a real easy job. So if you didn't know, this is the oxygen sensor. And depending on the type of configuration of your, of your, of your engine, you can have uh, as little as two, or as little as one really, and then in this car we have four because we have two banks pistons uh, a left and a right this is a v6 so what we're looking for is the first o2 sensor if you follow your exhaust manifold and you keep going back you'll end up having one before the catalytic converter and then one after the catalytic converter the one we're swapping out today is on the is below the catalytic converter so we're going to get under the car to go check it out. So let's do that now. Alright, so we're down here underneath and that is our offending oxygen sensor. So what we need to do is break that loose and for that, this is the tool we're going to use. It's a crow's foot offset uh, sensor wrench. It's got, a little, it's got a little crack in it right there so that you can put the wire through and it's going to fit right over that sensor. I've used quite a few for quite a few tools, and other than cutting the wire, this is the best way to get that off. So what you do, feed it over that wire like that, get get it set up, and once it's on there, you can fit your wrench in the off. You can fit your wrench in there and start giving it a twist. Now it's pretty cramped down here, so I'm going to give this a go. One thing you do got to watch out for is from time to time this will get real seized on there. I mean, big time. So you might have to put some heat. Uh, it's handy to put some knocker loose on it a little bit before you're doing the project. But we're just gonna give this a shot and see if we can't get this undone. All right, I'll be back with you in a few. So once you get the, uh, once you get the sensor loose, if you follow the, uh, if you follow the exhaust, exhaust back, you'll see that right here that's where your sensor plugs into so we'll plug the new sensor in there but it's got a little tab up here you push that tab you pull down and you'll get your sensor unplugged and that's where the new sensor will plug in so now that we got our sensor out let's go ahead and install the new one now before we go throwing this sensor in there the sensor came with a little bit of anti-seize so we're just going to put a generous amount of anti-seize around the crush washer and on the threads to hopefully keep this thing from seizing on us in the future if we ever got to do this again. Now these things last quite a while so I don't, ex I don't expect to have to do this in the near future but this is just going to help prevent that from uh, seizing up anymore. Now I've, I've, gobbed, I've gobbed this whole thing out. That's a ton of anti-seize and you do not need to use this whole tube. You really just need to use enough to get it on the, uh, on the threads, to get it on the mating surfaces and that, that'll do just fine and there's still plenty there so you don't got to use that whole thing. Let's go cram that thing in there. All right, so here we are back under the truck and we got our anti-seize sensor right here. We'll just get that started down here in that little hole. Make it a little bit easier once we get started move the wire. It's kind of at a weird angle it's not exactly like 90 degrees from anything. But yeah once I get started See, we got the anti-seize squeezing out right there. And then, come back up here and get that uh, sensor plugged in. Let's make sure we got it going in the right way. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Alright, that's plugged in. We'll get our wrench on this bad boy. Get that tightened down to hella tight. I don't know how you're supposed to get a torque wrench down here, 
I don't know what the torque spec is for this. This is a 22 millimeter wrench. And I'm just going to get it good and tight. I'll snug it down. See if we can get a little more twist out of it. Alright. Alright, that's officially... That's officially heckin' tight. So there we go. We got our new oxygen sensor in there. Let's go start it up and see how she runs. We got that sensor installed. We got it plugged in. We're back in the car. We're going to start this thing up and see what happens. My... Um, my code reader app is on my phone. I've talked about it before. I use Torque and I use a Bluetooth code reader that it's stupid cheap and stupid simple. You just plug it into your OBD2 port. You sync it up with uh, any code reader app on your phone. I use Torque, but um, there's a handful of them out there. I just I just like the way uh, I just like Torque, but you can set this up a bunch of different ways. But we just put it in there and I'm gonna start it and see what the check engine light does first and then I'm probably gonna have to cut video check the code reader and see what happens but I'm pretty confident that this is gonna solve the problem because oxygen sensors aren't that hard they're they're just like batteries eventually they they wear out um, honestly I'm probably gonna be in the market for the other three uh, shortly they they, 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 they they just happens uh, the Explorer has had all four oxygen sensors changed out the uh, Kia has had three out of four oxygen sensors changed out. So this is just a really common fix. The hardest part is getting them loose. But once you get them loose, it's really easy to get them back in there. All right, let's give this thing a start. All right, the check engine light's off. Here, check it out. So check engine light is normally right there. And it's off. And I didn't even get a chance to run codes or clear them again. Um, so that's that's a fix. We'll, we'll have to drive it and see what happens. But um, that's uh, that's about what I expected. Right now, you can smell it's running a little rich. But uh, you know, after the oxygen sensor starts sending data back to the uh, back to the computer, I'm hoping that that uh, that cools down a little bit. So that's it. Um, code P0156, the uh, Bank 2 Sensor 2 Auction Sensor. Done. It's fixed. Um, like I said, this uh, it's running rich now, but after a while, the computer starts taking that, that data uh, from the auction sensor, starts mixing it into the uh, air to fuel ratios. And you know, typically this helps your engine run more efficiently. So what I'm hoping to do is see just a slight improvement in uh, in you know fuel efficiency. Um, I got a lot of trips coming up this summer. Got a lot of camps that I'm taking the boys to. So it'll be nice to get any uh, miles per gallon gains that I can, considering how expensive gas is right now. So thanks a bunch for coming along on this fix. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this was helpful. If uh, you've never done an auction sensor before. Let me know what you're working on. And if you have done an auction sensor before and I completely screwed it up, tell me what I did wrong. Um, like, the, like the video. really helps me out. Tells me what I'm doing right and tells me if it's worthwhile. And uh, comment below. And consider subscribing if you like stuff like this. We still got videos coming up for the Forerunner. We still got a lot of things we're working on. So I'm hoping to do some cool things. And we're always working on that Ford Explorer. Just keeping it going. All right. Thanks so much for coming along. And I'll talk to you all next time. Bye now.